Welcome back to mobs. What we're going to do here today is to look at some IPsec security settings in Windows firewall systems. Uh, well, let's create a rule, a new rule, isolation type, and we're going to accept the defaults. Request authentication for inbound and outbound connections. Click next. Uh, still, we're going to use the Kerberos version 5 for domain, private, and public key authentication systems. Ping block rules. Let's see the properties and it. All IP addresses protocols would be ICM or all, all any ports. Kerberos, interface types, IPsec tunneling, apply authorizations, apply. You must set the authentication mode to require inbound and outbound. Or do not authenticate when using IPsec tunneling. Okay. You can also specify the address here. Authentication needs to be inbound and outbound. I have a computer over here in my network that uh, that's running Windows 7. You see, it's not actually finding my net uh, by my Windows 7 computer. So it's going to give you the request timeout system. <coughs> Okay, 100% loss. Delete. No. Disable the rule. Try again. See. It's working. So, again. Again, it's enforcing the IPsec rule. And the options will be there are same thing is actually happening over here. All sorts of authentication system, uh, sorry, uh, the normally normal authentication system would be Kerberos 5 and it affects all interface types and endpoint to endpoint, any protocol would be blocked. <clears throat> Let's do this again. Disable the rules. So you can do this vice versa with IP addresses and also host names. It works the same. Okay, that's it for for this video. Bye. Now that we have actually seen how to block traffic 
uh, we're going to do today is uh, how to do it through GPO. Where is the group policy management? Okay. Uh, we're going to create a new GPO in this domain and link it here. <clears throat> We're going to edit it. <clears throat> what we're going to do now is to go back to the computer policies, Windows settings, and security settings. And then Windows Firewall with Advanced Security. Then Connection Security Rules. Right click on it, New Rule. You see the same Connection Security Wizard appears what we're going to do right now is <clears throat> uh, I'm going to show you all the options available in this uh, in this process this is a long process and you have to keep track of it uh, so please follow accordingly we're going to do custom uh, both say to any any and request on authentication <coughs> for inbound we're going to do a recur authentication recur authentication for inbound and outbound connections click next what we're going to do is advanced let's customize here in the in this part you can see the first authentication and second authentication system and whatever you do over here in this authentication method two authentication methods do not put all this tick box on the first authentication is optional and second authentication is optional so what it means that any connection would be unsecure so anyone would be allowed to connect in this uh, connect to this server without any authentication system so this makes uh, it's totally makes it a uh, flawless connection to this net uh, to the to your server without any authentication system so click add we're going to do Kerberos here and for second authentication as you can see you can also um, add multiple authentication systems second for NTLM and nothing over here and first authentication if you put first authentication is optional then NTLM is actually used for legacy operating systems like Windows Server 2003 or uh, servers like that uh, it doesn't have any encryption in it Kerberos has. So click OK. Click Next. Protocol type would be TCP. <coughs> Specific ports, TCP uh, as we have created earlier, the policy it names what it, its name was Telnet. We're going to use Telnet because um, we're, we're actually creating rules for Telnet because telnet is actually um, transfers basic texts so 
port 23 for telnet and this will would apply for domain private and public network locations <coughs> put name in it Mobs telnet rule click finish this is the telnet GPO let's go back to the IP security policies on active directory Manage IP filter lists and filter actions. We're going to add the filter. Manage filter lists. We're going to add the filter. Next, where any IP address for source and destination. Let's go back again. <coughs> Manage IP filter lists. Manage IP, uh, in the in the filter lists. Uh, click add, click add on it. And then click next for source and destination. Both would be any IP addresses. <clears throat> the protocol for the protocol type we're going to put TCP in it and port number to this port would be 23 click next finish and our new IP filter lists came in uh, click close Click on IP security policies on Active Directory. Right click on it, create IP security policy. Type a name for it. Telnet IP security policy. Uh, these are, this rule is for older versions of Windows. Active Directory default, we're going to use finish and edit properties click add then what we are going to do is security options is IP tun tunneling attributes authentication methods and filter actions what we're going to do is on click next this rule does apply for network connections click next or oh, for all network connections and here it is I created earlier click next and request security require security and secure only accept unsecured communication but requests 
but request clients to establish trust and security methods uh, saying will not communicate insecurely to untrusted clients will not communicate with untrusted clients so permit unsecured IP packets require security then Active Directory Kerberos by default click next and finish finally <coughs> we have created the security policies assign and also assign well you can go either way so I hope this video is informational to you bye